chrome, uh, paint, murals. Chopped springs, sits low to the ground, rims. Definitely hydraulics and the wheels. Motor transmission and differential. Paint, interior, engine. I mean, you could reach 200, 300,000 easy, depending on, on how far you want to take it. If anyone's got any questions, it's, you know, don't be afraid to ask. I'm just another person. I was like in the fourth grade, one of my uh, friends down the street, he had a lowrider. I used to walk to the store and always walk by his house and um, I stopped there and eventually I started helping him out. You know, he had hydraulics on the car so I started, you know, handing him the wrenches, helping him out. And uh, After that I started working at a hydraulic shop and that's how I pretty much got exposed to lowriders through one of my friends, seeing him going up and down the street, hopping his car and all that, so that's what got me into it. The first time I actually saw a lowrider was in Daytona Beach for spring break. I was 17. Um, it was just mayhem on the streets. It was crazy. People were everywhere. I remember walking across the street to get beer at a gas station, and a guy in a silver cutlass pulled up. And you, from just looking at the car, you couldn't tell what it was. It was a factory paint job, just silver, but it had, I guess, chrome wire rims. And you're kind of looking at it, you're like, almost like an undercover car. You didn't know what was wrong with it or how it was different from anything else. And then he just jacked up the back, and I jumped back. I'm like, holy shit, it's, there's more to it than just like, your grandma's old uh, cutlass. Uh, this guy rolled up in uh, Lincoln, and uh, he played the lowrider song, he started hitting switches, and that's the first time I seen it. I couldn't tell you, I must have been, uh, you know, 13, 12 years old, something like that. Just a music video on TV, you know? Uh, probably through skateboarding, late 70s, early 80s. Um, in the magazines, some of the pros had them, and so you'd see pictures. Uh, Dogtown Crew, Ray Bones Rodriguez, Suicide Tendencies. Um, and then uh, early 90s, Hagen showed up with a 63 Chevy built and uh, I pancaked it. And right from then, I, I knew I had to have one. There's different sayings of how it started, but I, I, I believe it started with the Mexican people. Not because I'm Mexican or none, you know, that's not why. But, um, but there's also been blacks that started low riding from back in the days. Mostly the Latinos and the, and the Afro-Americans are the ones that really kept it going for a little, you know, kept it going. And everybody else like got on board and started uh, uh, getting more interested into it. But I think that the Latinos, they really, really did a lot for it. And uh, Afro-Americans did a lot for it too. So I'm thinking 50-50. The Hispanics will have a certain point of view um, the African Americans all have a different point of view. To me, I'm, I'm just doing my thing and doing what I like. The birth of lowriding is really connected to the birth of automobile culture here in the United States, but in particular post-World War II when there was a boom of car culture um, and when Detroit returned to making cars, you know, you had this turnover of second-hand cars or used cars that was particularly um, now available to working class folks that maybe couldn't afford new cars. And also, you know, a lot of the returning veterans also had uh, developed mechanical skills that they could work on cars and also had money to pay for car loans. The uh, Pachucos back in the day would uh, put the sandbags in the old cars, cut the springs and lower the back, drop the back. That's the early, early stuff. They took it like, a, like the American culture made it their own kind of style, you know what I mean? Individual style by lowering their cars, putting sandbags in their cars. But eventually, that stuff became like, you know, a nuisance. Guys would lower their cars and uh, maybe they would be too low to get in and out of driveways and the cops would harass them. So if the cops would pull them over, before they would pull them over, they would hit it up and kind of confuse the cops, right? 
And then obviously, loss came into effect that frames were scraping those damaged in asphalt. So then a lot of aircraft hydraulic parts got salvaged off tailgates, uh, different dumps. Like Adels was one of the was the first aircraft dump that got used. So hydraulic pioneers kind of put together what they could. And I think what fascinates me about low riding is how people use cars to create um, their identity, but more importantly, to build collectivity and build community. And I think that's really important, for instance, in a city of LA, which has a history of sort of segregation and racism, how especially in the 40s and 50s, African Americans and Mexicans used their cars to create a sense of pride in a time period in which they were looked down upon. And I think, again, you know, the car sort of represent the American dream. So sort of how people express themselves in that American dream is very unique in using cars. They knew that they, um, they did not belong in, in the larger society. But at the same time, they didn't have a vehicle, and that's a bit of a pun there, uh, to express themselves. So what they did was they took an icon of the larger society, a uh, car. They added a lot of art, a lot of their culture to American cars, to American muscle. And so I think when the two intertwined, sort of just made a beautiful thing. You've got this strain and this unresolved need uh, that's built up in an individual that has to, be, has to be gratified. And so an individual will ensconce him or herself into, into a group of people who share common language, symbols, belief systems, empathy, desire, uh, to fulfill and gratify their, their frames of reference, and bingo, you've got a subculture. Yeah, another William De Niro production. Send dog, y'all. Cold blue. Sack for sack. <laughs> Cold blue. Big, 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 big shout out. Your homeboy, William De Niro. Yo, Paul Vida, his socio, to sack. Take a sack. Down with Cold Blue, Stalin in there. Yes, yes. The Send dog. I see it, my nigga. The Latin legacy has arrived. This is our time, and we will shine. Yes, we will. That's right. And don't say one more thing that I got to let you hear. Put in your ear. Check this out, because it's all the way far right. Vengo de la calle, from those main streets Me oye compadre, I don't get beat Southgate to en yo barrio de Cypress Las razas más blandes, the world most high So stand dog de Los Angeles Puro coach homie, nada but the best Get my clown out, puro payasadas Chasing them chicks, I'm down for them drama Let me let you see that be my crew well, I think the, the way how, how subcultures sort of spread either nationally or internationally, I mean, a lot of it has to do with sort of media, right? I think sort of, and the proliferation and the globalization of media today where now you can sort of participate in low writing through the internet, right? So before you sort of like, I think low writing sort of spread through like Hollywood movies, um, low writer magazine as well, you know, um, had sort of an international audience for a while. More so the internet, because that's really how I got more involved with it and uh, how I made my connections to many, many people around the world. And then Lowrider Magazine taking the tours through different states and all that, the car shows, and you know, a lot more people start coming and start seeing and they want to eventually get a Lowrider and they get their car and they start doing their thing. Low had a, had a, a big, has a big part in, uh, in low riding because it's, it's basically an internet website that you can log on to and, and you can, there's, there's chat lines uh, on there, there's um, how to's, there's the hydraulic section, there's the paint and body section, there's wheels, because you know, sometimes people have even problem putting on wire wheels, they're, they're, sometimes they can be complicated, right? It's just people seeing the shit. I wouldn't even say the internet because when I first started, the internet wasn't really like a hit, right? You know, few people had internet, so it was just people seeing shit, taking pictures probably, who knows? I think just like I saw it when I was a little kid, I think people see it more and more now. They see the videos and they see, uh, they see their, their favorite artists on TV and their favorite rappers and stuff like that. And they're rolling around in lowriders and Impalas and Caddies and all that. And, uh, and they want to do the same thing or shit, I don't blame them. I mean, you see that on TV and all you say is, that's what the fuck I want. I want one of those. If you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. Absolutely. If you want to be with people like you, you'll find a way to be with people like you. 
Uh, some people think that you just slap on some, some wire wheels on a car and lower it down and call it a low rider. And in a sense it is because you're, you're low riding, you're low to the ground. But to me, a low rider is much more than that. Pretty much the little 13 inch wheels, 14 inch wheels and hydraulics and uh, pretty much uh, Impalas. That's the thing everybody kind of thinks of when they think of a low rider, an Impala. Paint, interior, engine, the rims, the hydraulics, definitely, you know what I mean? By definition, you could say a low rider is any car with chopped springs, sits low to the ground, rims. There's nothing like hydraulics. The sound of it, the power, everything. And then obviously a, a 13 and a 14 inch wire wheel, deep dish wire wheel, nothing bigger than 14s, and they have to be deep dish for sure. You should be able to lay a car all the way down, and, and in my eyes, a low rider should hop. Should be able to hop. To me, that's what a low rider is. It's, it's a woman. It's a woman on wheels. You know, there's different types of low riders. I guess people have different um, ideas of what a low rider is. A hopper basically speaks for itself. It's a hopper. It's, uh, it's meant to hit inches, and that's, that's just what it does, you know? So if you built a hopper, you're, you're doing it to hit back bumper, you know? You're, you're getting inches on that thing. It's kind of the sky's the limit from anything from laying low, like a few inches off the ground or even on the ground, that you can't even get a penny under it to uh, 20 inches in the air. So you always measure the car's hop, there's a clear stake with that increments of an inch going up. You have people chroming out engines, chroming out suspension, candy paint jobs, and they're doing over 100 inches. Then you have other cars, stock paint, just with a big lock up, and they're also doing 100 inches. It all depends on how you want your car to look. Some people don't care, some people love the game, and they just spend money to hop. You know, some of these hoppers, they look pretty beat up, but you, believe, you would be surprised the amount of money that people put into a hopper. Like, you know, you, you hop a car uh, once, twice, and, and um, people, people down here, they don't realize, you know, but in California, those guys change their motors on almost every, every time they hop the car. I think if you're the kind of guy that you want to go out and you're a competitive kind of guy and you want to bang that hopper because you, you want to beat that other guy, then that's what you're going to do. You're going to build that hopper. On the other hand, you have the guys who love to build show cars, you know? And that's another appreciation you gotta have, you know, to build a car to that level, to strictly to show it, uh, that's a whole other level. It's a lot more money involved in that. But uh, I, I respect both cases because you, you still have to have dedication on both ends. Trailer Queen is something that's done to perfection, as some people would say, but a uh, car that's completely, totally restorated from bottom up, everything's painted, frames, undercarriage, chrome, from suspension to engine to even underneath the car. Hydraulics is done like finessely, you know what I mean? Steel braided, hard lines, you know, stuff like that. There's cars that have all these modifications that probably ain't even safe to drive on the street. It's just not me. I mean, I'd rather have a clean daily street car that I could drive wherever I have to drive. My car, I hop on the highway and I'm good to go. Street car, everyday driver, whatever you call it. I mean, uh, I'd say more like this one right here. Something that you can just kind of jump in every Sunday, roll around in, uh, do whatever you want, you know what I mean? You don't mind parking it outside, you don't mind parking it down the street. To me, this car is daily driver, but I have all chrome and gold undercarriage. Uh, I have mirrors in my trunk. My interior is all redone, custom paint, bumper kit mural, rag top, sound system, everything. A lot of people would consider that a show car. To me, it's a street car. Representing girl world like what, 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 girl world like. Representing girl world like. Que 
para los hispanos, para todos los latinos Por si en caso no me entienden mi caliche cuando rimo Centroamericano, salvadoreño o en español Te voy a enseñar cómo hablamos los del Salvador Sexo, le digo culiar o me la quiebro Andar con el culo en la mano es que tenés miedo Cantearla, regarla, cagarla es equivocarse Ser loco y al ataque declararse o pelarse Usted es la cárcel en Colombia dicen parte Yo le digo chero a un amigo mero mero Es el mamacito cabal, está preciso Estoy de acuerdo, penetración es me la piso Una hembra es chamaca, un niño es un bicho También es un cipote, no gusta decir cerote Imagen de cariño no te ofendas es un bicho it's, it's not one culture, I mean anybody and everybody can do it uh, blacks, whites, Asians, Orientals, every, everybody can actually do this. African Americans and Chicanos sort of put their unique stamp on low riding through their customizing style. So if you sort of think about the opposite uh, car custom customizing style at that time, hot riding, you know, it was about raising your car, going fast, and low riding was the opposite aesthetic, right? You're, you're taking it low to the ground and it's about going slow. Maybe they just want to be different, right? Different from hot rods, different from imports, I don't know what they had back then, but it's just something completely different. It's a lifestyle, you know, to me it's, um, it's like art on wheels. These cars are narratives, they're stories, they're life histories. For me, they're almost a sense of mobile tattoos. If you have a lowrider and they have a lowrider, there's automatically some sort of like bond between you. I think the culture is very strong, regardless of race or creed or anything like that. All the clubs get along with each other. You, you don't go to a car show and, um, you know, these, these clubs, you know, go at it with these clubs. You know, sometimes you might get some spectators that are um, don't like each other. That's what brings in the, you know, the, the trouble and problems at the show. So when they see a guy with a, like this, or they see a guy with a bunch of tats, gang related, he's been in jail, blah, 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 blah. It ain't about that. A lot of basketball players, they have tats, but they're not gang related. That's their culture. How do we get labeled as deviant from the larger society? It's because, first of all, they likely don't understand what's going on in that subculture. And what's the root of, of anything that we don't understand is fear. And when you fear something, it's automatically and inherently and innately bad. A couple guys, you know, I've met in the past, you know, they look like, you know, they'll bite your head off if you ask them a question. And I'm coming from a lower and scene too. But no, like everyone, like everyone I've known, you know, pretty straightforward. I mean, don't get me wrong, you meet the one or two assholes out there who really thinks they're hardcore, but you know, I think they're just, you know, just serious people, I guess, you know. You, you're just meeting half of these guys and already, you know, they're coming to pick you up at the airport, they're driving you around, and they just met you, and they're, they're treating you like you, you've known them your whole life. It's nice to belong to something. You can feel that everybody else around you has the same common interest. It's almost like playing on a sports team where you guys are really close. You know, you can always depend on someone else to be there for you. If your car ever breaks down, if you ever need help, they'll come pick you up from downtown. They'll pick you, they'll, they'll get a car towed for you. They'll do whatever. Stay on weekends, stay long nights, just to help you out. And it's, it's nice to have that, that bond between, I guess it's almost like a brotherhood that you belong to. That's what makes a club, right? You know, people help another, supporting, right? The main thing is supporting and um, helping, being there, right? It's, it's a family, right? If, if I need something done, me, like, there's certain things I can't do to my own car where I need to call him. And he comes and does 90% of all the work on my car. I call my brother. He does all the mechanical stuff, everything, right? And, you know, other guys in the club, they, they help out, right? They do what they can. If you can't do something, I'm sure somebody else can. And being in a club, they'll do it for you. Being part of a car club, having friends with the same common interests, I'm able to hang out with them a lot more. And it's like having a bigger brother, it's like having family. A lot of people have lost their families over as far as low riding because they, they're putting too much time in their uh, cars and stuff like that. And um, some people's families with them, you know, they go to car shows every weekend with them. They're, they're there, you know, helping them out or whatever while their car's getting uh, work done in the garage. Family in, in, in the club that I'm, I'm starting down here, family, I think in any club, family has a lot to do with it. You know, family helps you a lot too, right? Because it's such a big dedication. Um, it's almost like having a relationship with your car. And it's, it sounds weird, but it, it is, right? I mean, you can spend a lot of time and money with your car, you know? It's just like having a woman, spend a lot of time and money. I got a lot of support. Uh, my wife's definitely supported me a lot. Um, probably more than she should have. 
family have to be there because if they don't support you, you know, you can lose your will to build a car or, you know, your drive. People should always put family first before anything, before any cars, any events, anything. My favorite car that I built was a 95 Fleetwood Brougham, the first convertible that I did. You know, like building the cars, seeing from what it comes from, you know, and seeing the outcome. And then when you go out there and, you know, obviously, you know, you, the attention and all the other guys who have cars and, you know, the appreciation they give you. Yeah, you know, it gives you all that good vibes. It's the rush of putting on a show and having people enjoy what you built. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of money goes into them cars. A lot of, a lot of money, you know, and it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Once you got some, you know, uh, you done this, you want to improve on the next thing, and before you know it, you know, it's like you put a lot of money into that car. Not only money, but time. A lot of time. It's a lot of headaches too. Running back and forth, you know, taking these pieces to get chrome and all that, and it takes a lot. You know, it takes a lot. Pulling your car on a nice sunny day. Your shit is just polished, rims gleaming, you know, your juice is fully charged, you're good to go, your stereo's all right, and you're rolling, and everyone's just admiring your shit, you know? You just, you're going 100 kilometers an hour or whatever, and you're just cruising, and you look around, it's quiet, your, your music's on, no one's bugging you, there's no traffic, there's no congestion, you just, it's almost like you're flying in an airplane, like it's just calm and relaxed. In terms of low riding, I think the way you feel is the way you feel, and your ride should be a representation of who you are. Low riding's my life. There's nothing else I want to do. Just wake up in the morning and drive my car, work on my car. It's my life. It's all I think of. It almost is like a virus. It's just once you get it, you can't get rid of it. You know, once you once you actually hit a switch for your first time, and you hear the pump spinning, there's to me there's nothing like that. That's that's. You know, it's 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 good, man. When he says it's my culture, man, it's like my inheritance. Uh, my family all low rides, so I just keep low riding myself. It's something that's traditional. I have a heart that's like a car, you know, my heart is in my wheels. And I found that just extremely poignant because it tells the whole story about what his culture is about, but it also gives you that glimpse of the fact that his whole story is, is going to be displayed on his car. No surrender. Best believe it ain't nothing when I tell you I'm a boss, man. Get him in, take him out. I ain't the one to cross, man. I got gunners that'll whack you for the low, low. Clip you for your low, low. Stick you for your back row. I'm on some muscle shit. I stick to it like Velcro. Matter of fact, I stick to it like Simon's twins. Something selfish only in it to win. Sunny Blue, aka, ain't no fucking with him. So please, oh please, don't you ever try and test me. Hit you where your chest be, have you looking like a veggie. Fast cash, fast car, I'm in it like a wedgie. Always on the move, yeah, I'm running it like Reggie. Push, push, yeah, push it to the limit. Hustle of my nature, rapping is a gimmick. Smooth for the win this, taking care of business. Get across the border, slick, this is how we live, right? Money gang, that's us. Got plugs on the chirp, niggas tell them out of nothing Front page, that's us, see the gun stay bustin' Press the issue, no doubt, turn nothing into something I'm gonna clean with it, I'm gonna move sick with it Under the radar, get it over, so slick with it This is how you move it, niggas something out of nothing This is how you move it, press the leak, it ain't nothing Moving this, moving that, ain't nothing they could do to me 
everything's done face to face, ain't no fooling me. Gung ho, tight fella, loyal to the jewelry. Federalis on the state, out they pursuing me. They heard about the white girl, they know about the dollar gang. They heard about Z's word, they know about the hustle, man. But even so, ain't nothing that can stick to me. Need to move them birds, just give to me. I got plugs down south with the right price. Cop and move them to the east, so I clock nice. This a gamble game, test your luck, shoot the dice. Too many baller blocking snitches, run and tell the vice. But I ain't tripping. Why? I got four guys making big moves, the rest small fries. <laughs> I'm just doing what a hustler does. And why you thugging? Just because. Money gang, that's us. Got plugs on the church, making certain mind of nothing. Front page, that's us. See the gun stay busting. Press the issue, no doubt. Turn down in the sun. I'm clean with it, I'm move sick with it. Under the radar, get it over so slick with it. This is how you move it. Making certain mind of nothing. This is how you move it.